Manasi Pratishtita Manome Bachi Pratishtitam Aviravirma Edi Bidasyama Anistaha Ritambadishyami Satyambadishyami Tanmam Abatu Tad Bhaktaram Abatu Abatu Mam Abatu Bhaktaram Om Shanti 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 This is the unique prayer again and again we try to do. It says that may my speech be fixed in the mind and may the mind be fixed in the speech. That means whatever I am telling, I am thinking. So this is, this balance, the mind and the speech is very, very essential. Without this is called hypocrisy. I am thinking something and I am telling something. That is a hypocrisy. So this what actually it means. Today, very interesting way, we will be discussing about the Vedanta Bhakti. Whenever we talk about the Vedanta, it goes about the knowledge. But this is the devotion in Vedanta. And Vedanta has three different schools. One is Advaita Vedanta, Vishishta Advaita Vedanta, Dvaita Vedanta. So we are going to study the Dvaita Vedanta. We have already studied the Vishishta Advaita, now the Dvaita. Afterwards, in the next month maybe, we will be having the completely Advaita Vedanta. Now here, when we are going through the philosophies, it comes the Nimbarka school, is a master, and his philosophy, he says, Dvaita Advaita. Dvaita means two, division, Advaita means one. So he says it is two, again it is one. How that we will explain. He was actually in the 12th century. He was born, nobody knows exactly the date and time. He was born in 12th century and he was a great scholar. He's from the Telugu community and his father was Jagannath and mother was Saraswati. Why they give the name of the father and mother? That is also important because how they are helping their children to grow. This Mr. Jagannath, he was actually very famous. He was a very devoted, mother was devoted and this Jagannath was his father was a very highly scholar. So obviously the son also grew in that same. So this father Jagannath and mother Swaraswati, he got his name Nimbarka and that is from a place Nimbapur, which is now known as Naidu Pattana, is in Bilari district of Andhra Pradesh. India. So this, this Nimbarka, another they say, he showed the Arka, means sun, on the top of a Nima tree. So one person came to him, this is mythological way people they like to say, so I, I didn't notice over, note it over here, but I'm just mentioning that he used to feed some of the, some then uh, some people, then only he used to take food. That was the tradition in India. 
So some person should come, the atiti, a person coming without any prior appointment, you must feed him before you take food. So he was observing that whole day passed, no one came, then only one Brahmin came and it became almost dusk. So that Brahmin said, oh, after the sun said, I don't eat. And this, what this person will do? Then he was thinking, he prayed to God. <coughs> so suddenly all people they saw, the sun is still there, it is not yet set, on the top of a neem tree. So from then, Arka means the sun, Nima, the tree, particular branch of tree, as because, because of his prayer, the God showed the sun on the top of the tree, his name became Nimbark. This Nimbarka, he, to establish his own view about the, you know, the philosophy means creator, creation, and the relation between the creator and creation. And to establish that, he naturally explained the Brahma Sutras. Unless and until you are explaining the Brahma Sutra, you cannot be accepted as a teacher. You have to explain the Brahma Sutra. This is the tradition, this is the speciality. And Brahma Sutra is collecting from all the Upanishads, the Veda, and then giving you a view about the Brahman the creator, who is all-pervading, without form, without attributes, but still he is the creator. Now this is the view of the Upanishad. But the explanation, then different type of teachers are coming, they are reading that, understanding that, explaining in different way. This explanation differs, so the philosophies are different, because of that. But the truth is the same. All leaders will take to that to the truth. And what is the truth? Brahman. Is Brahman with form, without form, with attributes, without attributes? These are the questions they have solved. Here it says, Nimbarka's theory is known as Dvaita. This is two different in Advaita, that is unity. So unity in two. What are the two? The creator and the creation. Again, they are two different. So this is very special way. And when he is explaining this, some of the scholars said, but it has already been said by someone else, but non, not known. He has no popularity. But he was also the great scholar, his name was Bhaskara. The Bhaskara, he made his philosophy Veda Aveda Bada. Those who understand Sanskrit, they know Veda means different, Aveda means unity. So Veda Aveda Bada is a theory. The same way the Bhaskara, and Bhaskara was a strict Vedantin, not like Nimbarka. Nimbarka was born and brought up in a devotional family. So his idea was this thing should be explained in devotional way. But Bhaskara was before him. And Bhaskara was a strict Advaitin. To him that Brahman, the creator of this universe, is full of attributes, but without any particular form. So we have to remember, these are the small, small, differences. So actually today the, all these Sunday classes that I give, it's not a topic that I'm giving the lecture, it's the class. So it's a little different. We are now studying the philosophy. On a particular topic I give the talk and then go, that is a, usually they say, the Sunday discourse. But as because most of our people, devotee, the same, they come, they attain. So it is better to understand slowly the what is the philosophy. So we are studying the philosophy. In the philosophy it says, the Vashkara, not Nimbarka, the Vashkara, he is an Advaitin and he is telling 
Brahman is the creator and Brahman is full of attributes. There's a lot many qualities are there. They're full of attributes but without any particular form. This is his view. Brahman transformed himself in this universe without losing his entity as the absolute. So this is the two points we have, these are the two points we have to remember. Brahman is the creator. He is creating out of his own, from his own, but he is remaining as it is. This is the tricky point of the Vedanta. All teachers will tell this. Brahman is not getting any way transformed into this world, losing his own identity. No, it is not. So Purnamada Purnamidam, that is the sloka they quote, it cannot, it is always full. From the full when you are taking something, it is remaining full. It is. So this way it says. Now it is the creator. Creator, creation and the relation. These are the three questions we have to answer. Now the Vashkara, just a few years before Nimbarka, he is telling that Veda Aveda Bada and he, here he is telling Brahman is the creator. He is having the attributes. That means he is compassionate, he is loving, he is this, he is that, all contribute are, are there. But at the same time he is not having the form. This is one point. And second, after creation, Brahman remains as it is, no change. And this is the creator. What about the creation? Jiva. Jiva is his real nature. Jiva is created by Brahman. So obviously, in, it, in its real nature, it is one with Brahman. Again, Jiva, while in bondage, is different from Brahman. So Veda or Veda. Veda where? When the, the Jiva is different with all his attributes. So then it is different. But at the same time, in real nature, it is one with Brahman. Now we can say that when the sun, if you are testing the DNA, it belongs to the father. But father is an illiterate person, son is a highly educated person. So in DNA, father and the son are one, they are not different. And many other qualities. But at the same time they are different, because one is illiterate, another is educated. One is not known in the society, another is highly placed in the society. So the same son and the father, in one sense they are one, another sense they are different. So, Bheda and Abheda, this is the Bhaskara's philosophy. And he is telling that the Brahman who is the creator after creation from himself, he is remaining as it is, no changes. So that is the main difference. Bhaskara said that Brahman, the supreme being, is endowed with attributes, but not a person. Here, no place of worship or adoration, etc. in Bhaskara. It is the only knowledge. If you understand this, it is good for you. And Bhaskara's Veda Aveda do not preach devotion. Then come Nimbarka. He is following the Vashkara steps, but at the same time adding devotion. Vashkara, he said, no devotion, this is only the knowledge. Nimbarka said, Brahman is the ultimate existence. Brahman, through the unique Prabhava, now he is giving another explanation. Brahman is creating this universe out of himself. He says, yes. But how unique Prabhava, this is the addition of Nimbarka. Prabhava means is a power. He is creating Jeevas and Jagat. So Jeeva Jagat is created by the Brahman. How? 
through his power. Shankara said, this jiva and jagat was created by Brahman, how? Through maya. We will come to next sometime. So each and every one is explaining in a very unique way who is the creator One, what is this creation, how the creation came. And suddenly there appeared the God and God said, hey, there be this, there be that, everything came. Philosophy said, no, that cannot be. There must be some system. And to make the system, they say, this is the way. And now Nimbarka, he is telling, God is creating and God is Brahman. He is absolute and he is creating this universe, what is power, prabhava. He is using the Sanskrit word prabhava. Prabhava means power. Now this, they completely, this jiva, the individual soul and this universe completely depend on Brahman. So naturally they are different. Unless and until you are completely different, that is, you are com constantly depending on someone. So that way you are not that. Now they are giving the explanation of the Brahman. Brahman or reality has two parts, Nimbarka is telling. He is having the two parts. What? One is Swatantra, that is completely independent. Satantrata in Hindi they say, that means independence. A country is free, not uh, ruled by any other thing, so Satantra. So Satantra, Brahman is Swatantra, completely independent. At the same time, Paratantra, dependent. Why? Because he is creating and some other things is depending on it. What are the things he created? Two. One is Jiva, another is the world. And Jiva is conscious and the Prakriti, this world, is unconscious. So the creation has two parts. One is conscious, another is unconscious. And these two, because of these two, the Brahman is Paratantra, depending. But he is Satantra also. We will come to Paratantra afterwards. About the Satantra, Nimbarka is giving a list of things. He is telling that the creator is the Brahman, he is the God. He is free from Pancha Klesha. Now the difference is coming. He is free from pancha klesha. What is a pancha klesha? First is ignorance. Agyana. Klesha means suffering. Klesha, suffering. God never suffers. Why? He is free from ignorance. I was observing one movie. So one, the uh, young man and the uh, lady, they love each other. Now the gentleman, someone entered into Another lady entered into his room because it was not closed. He went outside to purchase something. Now another lady came and she saw that the phone is ringing. She picked up the phone and that other lady who is to love this young man, she was telling, is he there? Of course, he is with me. We are having great time. <laughs> No, that man was not there. He had gone out. And in the meantime, he, she entered, picked up the phone, unnecessarily told that. And immediately, the other lady, without inquiry, without waiting, she, so is this? So that means he is not faithful. I must commit suicide. She took a lot of other pills, etc., etc. Somehow, in the movie, you cannot stop. So, she was saved. So, <laughs> but when these things were happening, I was wondering, see, ignorance. The because of the ignorance, because we do not know, so many things we just imagine. And because of the imagination, our actions are also becoming bad. We imagine that he or she is bad. And whenever I meet that person immediately reaction either friendly or otherwise so this is the cause because we do not understand 
we do not know. Somebody is very successful, we feel jealous. We do not know, maybe in the past life, he did a lot of good things. And that is the reason he has got this opportunity. This way, if we can understand, then our life will be more soothing. So, Satantra, he is completely free. Why you can say that he is free? He is free from all klesha. And they have listed only five klesha. Klesha means misery. And the cause of misery is first, ignorance. If you could know things, then there would not have been any problem. When you apply for the job, we are all eagerly waiting. Oh, I am, am I going to get the job and all these things? If I knew, could re read the mind of my employer, I could, oh, this fellow is going to employ me, no problem. So let me go to have a movie, cinema, enjoy. Because he is going to sing. So that is the reason people go to this type of people who can see and tell the future. Fortune tailor, something like that. So this ignorance, then from the ignorance come egoism. The lady in that movie, she immediately thought, I must kill myself so that my lover will suffer. This is ego. So naturally, that from the ego only, she is making the mistake. And why she is taking like this attachment? Tremendous attachment with that young man. See how it comes. First is ignorance. Second comes the ego, egoism. Third comes the attachment. If these three are there, then hatred comes. And also the f last thing, fifth one, fear of death comes. Of course, this lady was going to commit suicide not happily. Nobody commits suicide happily. So she was also doing that. But at the same time, fear of death in everyone. God knows I am not going to change any time. So no fear of death at all. So this fear of death, fear of change. So five things, ignorance, then egoism, attachment, hatred, fear of death. So this is, God is free from this. Jiva is having all this. So this is the difference. Then comes, God is omniscient, omnipotent, and accomplish everything by will. In Sanskrit it's called Satya Sankalpa. God accomplishes everything just by will. And that is the reason in the great God of the Hindus, Jagannatha is not having any hands. Why? He just wishes and everything is done. And the devotees, mainly the worshippers, they do not understand why the hands are not there. So they have made very costly golden hands. It's not necessary. It's not necessary. It is unnecessary. Because that is the reason to understand this particular philosophy that God is Satya Sankalpa. Whatever he thinks that happens. Even the person who is practicing this spirituality, they also become Satya Sankalpa to some extent. Ma Saradamani Devi, that was the, sometimes the problem. And one a little crazy person used to come and visit her. It was a rainy day and the water was ra raising in the river. Suddenly the thought came in her mind, oh my God, if that my son, that she used to tell everyone's son, so that son, if he tries to come, it will be very difficult because the river, the water has so much, he has to swim, he won't get the boat to cross. And then it is raining. The moment he thought that man appeared, completely drenched, Ma, I have come. So Satya Sankalpa, anything you think, it will immediately happen. Mother was thinking, now somebody is suffering, if a doctor come, doctor appear. Satya Sankalpa. So like this, the God is a Satya Sankalpa. So God is omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent and accomplishes everything by will. Human being cannot. Jiva is different. 
God is free from law of karma. But a human being is not free from law of karma. They are all the time having that. And God is free from qualities. That is Satya Raja Tama. But human beings are having Satya Raja and Tama. Sometimes very good, sometimes middle, and sometimes less. So these three different Satya Raja Tama, that makes a person bad or mediocre or good. Satya Raja Tama, these three qualities, God is free from that. And God is is the goal for every human being. God has, God has no goal. But the human being has to achieve that particular position as God is. God has different names. They are giving Paramatma, Bhagavan, Ishara, Rama, Krishna, Purushottama, like this. God is the creator, Srashta, and only redeemer and the giver of liberation. No one can give. God possesses six qualities. Jnana means knowledge, Shakti means power, Bala, strength, Vaisarya, lordship, lordliness, Virya, energy, and Teja. This is also again the power, the Teja. And all these are non-different from God, these qualities and all, but yet they are not identical with the you cannot say any powerful person is God. No, you cannot say like that. So God has those qualities. At the same time, he is free from those qualities. This is the tricky point of the philosophy. So, Dvaita and Advaita. Eternal form of God is known as Radha Krishna. Now, this is very special for Nimbarka. Nimbarka now, he is bringing Radha Krishna. He is a Vedantin and he is giving the example and all those things from the Upanishad. He is quoting from the Upanishad, explaining his views and his views that God has created this but he is not attached with all this. He has created the Jiva and the world. The Jiva is having the consciousness and the world is not having the consciousness. So all these things but God is having all these qualities of which he is not attached at the same time, if you like to think what is God, Radha and Krishna. This is his introduction. Is the, Krishna is the Lord of love. We all know Krishna is the Lord of, and Radha is the power of love. To love also you need some power. And that is Radha. Narendranath before he became famous Vivekananda, he had the strong attitude not to become a samsari. So he used to say, I do not like Radha Krishna and all those stories of their love. I don't like those things. So this way, all the time, he used to talk about Radha. Shami Sri Ramakrishna told, why do you hate Radha in that way? At least you can take the, accept the love of Radha, the power of love. How much she is loving God. She was a married lady, even then, with breaking all the bondages. She is constantly going to God without caring for anything. So that power of love you should accept. So according to Nimbarka, Radha is the power of love and the Lord Krishna is the love himself. So this is the God has an eternally divine abode and free from prakriti or nature made of Shuddha Sattva, Aprakrita Sattva. Shuddha Sattva the word has been used by Ramanuja and he says Aprakrita. Aprakrita means this worldly, it is not worldly. His abode, his place where he lives is completely free from all these and that is called Vaikuntha. Most of the majority of the devotee of the Krishna, they know Vaikuntha and their goal is to go to Vaikuntha. Vaikuntha, look, it is eternal. For the benefit of the devotees of God, 
the form has been described so that one can imagine and can meditate. It's a God's form. He is all pervading. At the same time, he is having the form, and it says he is holding a conch, shankar, then a discus, a, that is chakra, then saranga as a bow and as a weapon, and he plays flute and horn. It is not the Krishna or the Vishnu that we always think, shankar, chakra, tada, padma, not that. It is a little different. And he is wearing the yolo garment. He likes the tulsi and the flowers. So it is the way the devotee's mind can concentrate. So all the Vaishnavas, they will always keep the tulsi. Even sometimes in the Hindu temple, some of the ladies, they think that is auspicious, is a very pure work that they are doing. They will grow some plants, tulsi plant, and free they will distribute. Some they gave over here also. And they will say, if the tulsi is dying, that is very bad for you. And then why you are giving here? So who is going to, <laughs> if it is bad? But they like to keep it over here so the devotee can come and take. Like this, some people they take, of course. So this way, so tulsi is greatly, and then there are a lot of stories about tulsi will be there, etc. But tulsi has some medicinal values, ex all these things are there. But why this description of God? Because so the people can meditate on God. That is the reason he is telling. According to Nimbarga, Brahman also manifests. Brahman is manifesting in different forms. One is Vasudeva. Now these names are very famous in Mahabharata. So he has taken the names from there and then he is giving why this name. Vasudeva is the Supreme Lord. First. Second, Shankarshana. Shankarshana, his brother, we know. The Shankarshana is the individual self, Jivatma. Vasudeva is the Shetragya, supreme self. And individual self, Shankarshana. Then Pradhubna. Pradhubna is the mind of all beings. That is called Pradhubna. Then Aniruddha. Aniruddha, controller of cause and effect. In different names, same God, he is doing different things. Then comes the avatara. So avatara is, one is guna avatara. Guna, all qualities are there. What are the qualities? Satta, Raja, Tama. So the same God, according to the Nimbarka, it is Radha Krishna. But Krishna is not that ordinary Krishna that we see. He is the Supreme Brahman and from that Supreme Brahman is coming incarnation and incarnation also having so many varieties. One is Guna Avatara. If you go to any Vaishnava, they will discuss in the long length about the Guna Avatara. Guna means Satta Rajatama. And so Brahma, Vishnu, Maheshwara, these are the Guna Avatara. Then Purusha Avatara. The Supreme God controlling evolution and the Prakriti. That is called Purusha Avatar. Then Leela Avatar. It's all names. Leela means divine play. And that Avatar is called Abesha Avatar. That is Nara Narayana. God himself is becoming the incarnation. Has no relation with the Jiva. That is Nara and Narayana. And then Shaktangshavatara, manifesting his power through some human being like Kapil Muni and also Parushuram, Narada, like this. The power of God, Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, that's why he mentioned, whenever a person, you see, is accepted by thousands of people because of some particular quality, know it for sure, the God's power manifested through him. So this is the conception. The God is manifesting his power because he has chosen him. Like Swami Vivekananda came over here, the 29, 30 years young man, he stood and addressed sisters and brothers of America. There is nothing new. This is the English word. How these people, they stood up and clapped for two minutes, why? What was there, the special in this world? 
power of God. Now, if you go and tell the same thing to people, you know, well, okay, then what next? <laughs> and they will never be mesmerized like that. They stood up and clapped so such a long time. Power of God. And this is the Shakti, Shakti Shakta Angsha. Angsha means the part. Shakti means the power. The part of power. Whose power? God's power. Manifesting through someone. Now here he is giving the Kapila. Purna Avatara. Qualities and power of Brahman, God, manifest as incarnation. This is called Purna Avatara. Who are they? Sri Rama, Sri Krishna, and in the present day, Sri Rama Krishna. This is the Purna Avatara. God himself is coming, not the power. Sri Rama Krishna sometimes praying to the mother, Ma Kali. Mother, how I alone can do? So many people are coming, they are not having any spiritual values. So we have to change their mind, I alone cannot do. Please, then he suddenly remembered Master Mahashaya, the, the person who wrote the gospel. He said, give him some power. He lives in the city. He meets many young people and educated people. Give him some power. Then suddenly he says, oh, only one-fourth will be sufficient. Okay, if you say like that. Master Masha, he was a householder, and whenever he used to see it, people used to come and listen to him. Majority of the Ramakrishna mission monk in the first generation, they all came inspired by the Master Masha. Even today, thousands of people, they get inspiration after reading the gospel of Sri Ramakrishna or listening about Sri Rama, the gospel. This is the power that manifested through Master Maharshi. How Thakur prayed, Sri Ramakrishna prayed, so the power manifested. We must become humble if we are successful in anything. Maybe in the music, maybe in the games, maybe in the electronics, maybe in lecturing, maybe in writing, maybe in anything, if I am successful, become very humble. Why? Know it for sure. If the God has chosen you, given you this power, he can also take it out any day. He will forget everything. So this is called Purnavatara. According to the Nimbark, the God is God, God, with form and attribute. So this is the difference. The Bhaskara, he said, God is having the attributes but no form. Nimbarka says, God is having the form and also the attributes. Because God is free from the gunas of the Prakriti, he is Nirvishesha. These are all Sanskrit terminology. Nirvishesha without any attributes. Vishesha Nirvishesha. Vishesha means special. When there is nothing, so Nirvishesha. He is the master, not bound by any attribute. See, if a person is having some quality, some attribute, he is bound by that. Suppose someone can sing well, very careful about his voice. He won't take the yogurt, maybe that, that may harm the voice. He won't talk much. He will be doing gurgling, he will do these, that, very much careful about. And someone who is a cinema artist, maybe movie, and careful about his physical beauty, otherwise they won't be able to do that. So all these things, that if there is an attribute, they are attached to that. God has nothing like that. God knows where the attribute will go. Any time I can bring, any time I can leave. So that is the special quality. So nirvishesha. So no vishesha, no speciality. Nirvishesha. Now about, about the jiva, according to the Nimbarka. He is different from Brahman, also identical with Brahman. Now all this time we were discussing about the creator. Now the creation. In the creation, as we know, there are two varieties. One is with consciousness, another without consciousness. We are not discussing about without consciousness. Consciousness is there, but not manifested in that way as it is in the jiva. 
particularly in the human being. The human being, the consciousness is so much manifested. And that is why human being is so important. So Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna is mentioning, do you think human being is ordinary? A person can think about God, who else can do? A person who can think about God, meditate about God, imagine about the greatness of God, he is not ordinary. So that capacity God has given. So here the jiva is having both attachment with the Brahman and the difference from the Brahman. Different because jiva is a created being and having so many other qualities and for those qualities depending on God. So they are different. And non-different because the God is pervading within him also. So that's why they are different and non-different. Dvaita, Advaita. Jiva has consciousness. I, I, I. That consciousness. Each and every one. I. A little baby. My mother. My father. I am doing this. That I comes from where? That I is good for us, bad for us also. With that I, that self-confidence, we grow. Oh, you can do it. You are very good. We slowly grow. And then the moment that becomes too much egoistic, that becomes the destruction point of the human being. So I sense the self. Also body-mind made by the Prakriti. There is two are there. I is consciousness. And this body-mind is not conscious. Is the made of Prakriti. Through Abhidya, knee science, the conscious get entangled with body-mind. In the Christian theology, the story, the first man and the woman, that is Adam and Eve, they ate some fruit without the permission of God. The story goes like that. Then the God never like that, banished them from the heaven. So that is the original sin. It's a wonderful story. But it cannot explain what really happened over there. Here in the Vedanta philosophy they say, I consciousness became more and when the eye consciousness got entangled with the body and mind, so obviously I became different from God. Once that the master master, the recorder of the conversation, so he was telling master master, some conversation was going, master master suddenly said, how can I, it is this that I cannot see God, how can I see God? Immediately, Sri Ramakrishna took a piece of cloth and then held it like this, in between, Master Mahesha and Sri Ramakrishna, and he told, can you see me now? No. Then he lowered it, can you see me now? Yes. Then what is the, I am here, all the time here. Then what is the difference? Difference is, this only one piece of cloth, and that is ego. If I can remove the ego, I see God. Only because of the ego, that oh, he also says, because it is avidya. This is the knee science. Through the grace of God, I can get freedom from the body, mind, this consciousness. This classification of the jivas again is coming. Here, jiva can pray, but unless the God's grace is there, you cannot go beyond the ego. So that is the only point. So Jiva is nothing but Shiva, God. And because of the ego associated with this body and mind, which is temporary, I, 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 some of the, uh, the we read in the newspaper, one of the great leader now, in the world leader, the whatever way he is having the hair cutting, no one else in the country can do that. Because I am the supreme person over here, so I am having the hair cutting like this, so you cannot follow that. He is a peculiar person. 
Now the question when that person was telling, the if he is having this type of hair cutting in the October, first October, so the whole month, that particular hair cutting is not allowed for any other else. And suppose someone, unfortunate one, had that type of hair cutting in the September, 30th September, and the first October this man went and had that, what he will do then? <laughs> He had to cover his head with all something. So this is peculiarity. So because tremendous ego, but one day that particular body will be burned. So body and mind, that association with what? With ego. If that association is gone, everything is gone. And then what becomes? We become totally free. So Though all jivas are potentiality of God, having the potentiality of God, that is Brahman, Nimbarka recognizes the different gradation. Each and every soul is potentially divine. Swamiji is telling, Vedanta is telling, otherwise how we can realize God? There must be, potentiality is there. If you take a doggy and a small boy into the classroom, that human boy, human person can learn many things, not the dog. Though the dog is also attending the same class, same way, because the potentiality is not there. So the potentiality must be there, otherwise it is impossible. Sometimes even the human being, there some are very good, some are not. Why? The capacity depends in that. Here, according to that, Nimbarka has given the gradation. One is Nitta Mukta, those who, are, uh, do I have, uh, those who have read the gospel of Sri Ramakrishna, you know Sri Ramakrishna is having also giving this gradation of different type of people. Nitta Mukta, eternally free. They are never bound. Why? They have done something by which they got that position completely free, nitta mukta. Then the muktas, jiva, liberated by the grace of God, they are muktas. Then come mumukshu, the mumukshu jiva trying to get liberation. And third, baddha bound by desire, but having this practice of morality. They did some morality, moral job also, but bound by desire. They go to temple with a prayer. They'll be offering a, a fruit, but will immediately say, God, please save me from this, or give me this and give me that. Desire is there, and at the same time, they are practicing religion in that way. They are Baddhas. But Nitta Baddha, Nitta Baddha, eternally bound, and by nature only prone to do evil, no ethical or spiritual idea is there in them. They are nitta -vatta. And about them is a great description is there, I have not brought over here, because the modern mind, it will be very difficult to accept. And he says they will be going on taking birth again and again in lower or different type of things, and that is the way they will suffer, suffer, and suffer. And the eternal hell conception of this Christianity and Islam, the eternal hell, it is nitya baddha. Baddha means bound, bound by desire, bound by ego. So that is the eternal hell. They are going on. But Swamiji said, no, they have chance also. Sometime when they're going on getting the blows, blows and blows, and suddenly they will look up and say, how is it? Those people are happy, but I am not. So there's a story in the Upanishad, very famous story. And on the basis of that famous story of the Upanishad, someone, I don't know, but the gentleman came and met, I forgot his name. In the, if you go to Ganges, many of you have visited, the moment you enter, you, you will see there's a beautiful way on the glass itself it is drawn two birds. One is sitting on the top, another in the lower. And the lower bird is looking at the upper bird. Upper bird is sitting calm and quiet. 
same thing happened. Some people, after getting the blows from the world, then they look at, oh, how come these people are very happy? Then they come. What is the secret? That you are having nothing but so much joy. So they turn. That is what Vedanta says, Advaita Vedanta. And here, Nimbarka is telling, Nittabaddha. No way for them. <laughs> so you have to go on. Now, what is our position? If you go and stand before a mirror and ask, what is my position? Nitta mukta, completely free? No. Muktas, I don't think. Then, mumukshu. And because we are all mumukshus, even the weather is bad, and our ashram is so far away from the cities, from any place when you are coming, you are driving 45 to 1 hour. And if you don't have the car or someone to give you the ride, no chance of coming over here. Because we are in Himalaya. You do not approach. We have only one train that goes from here. Only morning it goes to the city, Chicago. And in the evening that same train comes back. If you miss, you miss. So even then you have come, you are sitting, you are listening, and it's not a very wonderful talk. So even then you are having this minutely, like, just like a student, you are listening. Why? Some desire is there. Let me try to understand what is it. That is called Mumukshuta. It's not only curiosity to know. At the same time, a feeling, can I also be free? How to? That is called mumukshu. All of us are mumukshus. The jivas trying to get liberation. Those who are going to the, uh, the temples, mumukshus. A little, maybe they are not conscious of it. But if you are conscious about your mumukshuta, I must have to attain God. I must know God. I must know who am I. All help will come. That is the uniqueness of spirituality. Just only if you have that desire, I am going to know. You will see some people will come, he will get the information, he will go over there, he will like that, and then slowly, slowly all things will happen. The person who recorded the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna, Master Mahasaya, he decided to commit suicide on that night. But somehow he could not commit the suicide. He went to his friend and relatives, and he was Sidhu. And he, Sidhu was not aware that he is planning to commit suicide. <laughs> Sidhu told, next morning is the holy day. Let us go and visit a beautiful place on the bank of the river. And they went. Because the flower garden and all those things were there, they wanted to visit. And will we call it accident by chance? Or by the divine will, Master Mahasaya and his friend Sidhu the first person they met, Sri Ramakrishna. And when they reached over there, the room, still it is there, they entered into the room, Sidhu took him. But he was not influenced by Sri Ramakrishna's words or the personality. But Master Mahasaya, the moment he looked at Sri Ramakrishna, talking with other people, oh, it is just like the holy person is giving the discourses and helping the person to get free. He liked it. And this is called samaskara. So when you come, when you like, that means this place is for you, samaskara. And go on trying to develop that samaskara. If you visit other places, you don't like that way. But some place if you go, some person if you meet, you will feel, oh, this is the person. I really like to listen to him. I like to talk to him. I like to go to him, his company. His talk you like, and the place also you like, that is your place. First you mark. And then that mumukshuta, the desire to get free, you have to start from there. So you're, you are trying to reach over there, that is your effort, purushakara. That is your effort. And then when you are going and sitting and praying to God, I do not know anything. I have not read any book. But I love you. How to realize you? How to get free from all these bondages? I have seen those 
people sitting over there, the upper branch bar. I am jumping and getting tired of this. Please help me, help will come. That is God's grace. Your effort, Purushakara, and God's grace, Ishar Kripa, or both will meet, and it says you will be completely free. So, Mukti does not mean, according to the Nimbarka, the Advaita Bhakti means the dissolution of the individual nature of the jivas. Advaita Vedanta says complete dissolution. But here it says, no, not complete dissolution. As a river, when merging into the ocean, there is no identity of the river. So it is not like that. What happens? It is like a substance, maybe a sun, Surya, the sun, that is the substance, and its rays. Rays are not sun. Waves are not the ocean, but they are connected. It will be like this. So, what are the paths of liberation? The Nimbarka says, Jnana Yoga and Bhakti Yoga. The Jnana Yogi meditated on the self as a part of Brahman, different and non-different. Whatever the philosophy that he has already said, I am Brahman at the same time, I am different from Brahman. So I meditate on that particularly and slowly, slowly I get liberation. But the bhakti through service of God, how body, speech and mind, these services, three services, physically you are coming and helping something for the work of God. Some people they came last time, a lot of people came, it was difficult for car parking, we are having only 100 car parking area and that the 600 people came, minimum 300 cars. So what to do? Some people immediately took decision, we must keep this here. And they didn't go down to see the puja. They were constantly out helping people for parking. There were some people, they were constantly trying to help people with the food. How they will go, what will happen, they are helping. Some people are bringing the drinking water, some are bringing these, that. They are all helping so that they have no connection with this ashrama. Even if they don't come, nothing happens. They are not getting any salary. Forget about the promotion or demotion. But still they are coming and helping. Why? Just for the service of God. Remember it. Whatever, the moment there is something is lying over there, you remove that. And when the, some people, they will be coming or habit it, always putting the finger on the glasses and push the door, leaving the mark on the... One lady comes, first thing she will do, cleaning the glasses. So that is the service. So I should be very careful that I am not disturbing this holy place or any, any place. At the same time, whatever service is possible, I will do. That Nimbarka is telling, that is the first step of the bhakti. Helping the God, servicing God, not helping, servicing God with your action, body. Then speech, when you are talking about God all the time, whatever the discussion we are having, talk about God. And third is thinking about God. So how you are serving God? In three ways, physically, through speech and mentally. What will happen? What are the goals after doing these? You may have the company of God uninterrupted. Uninterrupted company of God. Practice of the presence of God, a great Christian sage, he wrote that book, Practice of the Presence of God. Uninterrupted company of God and which is nothing but love. So that you will get Sayujya in Sanskrit it says Sayujya uninterrupted. Bhagavan Sri Ram Krishna he realized mother he was very happy. The next day he went and he was praying mother didn't appear. Then he started crying. How is it that you are not coming today? Then he started praying. No it won't be. You have given me darshan it is good. 
but you must be always, always with me. Whenever I want to see you, you must come. He went on praying, praying. A condition came when, whenever he is thinking, immediately God is coming, mother is coming. He is talking with mother. One gentleman came and he wanted to give him diksha in the, the sannyasa. Sri Ramakrishna called, wait. He ran to the mother. I, let me talk to mother. He went and then talked to mother. That man has come and he is telling that he like to give me diksha. Shall I go and take the diksha? Then he came and told. Mother told, you have come for me. Give me diksha. So that way, constantly talking with him, the great personality is that over there, that one Swamiji, Premananda, he was invited in the East Bengal. In those days, it was so difficult to go over there. You have to purchase the ticket for rail, then get down, and then the, you have to take the boat, and then crossing the river in the then bullock cart. That way, you have to go. Everything was arranged for him. And he was ready, keeping his bags and other things ready. He went to offer pranam to Sri Ramakrishna, and he was not coming back. Then the people went to see why he is making late because the, we will miss the train. They went and saw he is talking with Sri Ramakrishna. They couldn't see Sri Ramakrishna. They saw the picture and the Sri ji was talking. You say that I should not go but it has been arranged for a long time. People will be waiting over there. Then some afterwards he said, okay, since you are telling I won't go, I won't go but I don't know whether these people will like it or not. But I am I'm not going. He came down and told these people that no, Thakur is not giving the permission to go this time. Maybe in future I will go. So obviously these people, they thought this, what to do. They went back and the boat they were supposed to take to cross the river capsized. And all people were drawn. That is called the Sri Ramakrishna. Here in Detroit, Swami Vivekananda was given a cup of coffee. The moment he picked it up to drink, Sri Ramakrishna appeared and told Narin, don't drink. It has been poisoned. They want to kill you. Don't drink it. Can you imagine? This has happened over here in the lives of these people. So God is always with you. If you can break only one thing, your ego. How to break? Three ways physical service and through speech constantly talking about God, reading about God, hearing about God and mentally going on repeating his name. And then samipya, proximity with God. Then comes sarupya, similarity of God. And then salokya, the you are residing, living in the abode of God. That is called Salakya. These are, are the goals of the Vaishnavas. So, friends, I was thinking that I will also talk about another beautiful philosophy that is Suddhva Advaita. What the philosophy we discussed today? Dvaita Advaita. And now, the, now this time is up. So, it is another sage. He gave this philosophy Suddha Advaita. All Advaita. Advaita. But one is Vishishta Advaita, Dvaita Advaita, and Suddha Advaita Ballava. And the next Sunday, maybe, we will go to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who was also a Advaitin but propagated Dvaita. We will read that. And finally, we will go to Shankaracharya. Then there is no God, only you left. So, this is the way we will slowly, slowly study. Thank you for coming. Let us say Shanti for three times and we will conclude. Om Shanti 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 Hari Hill.